very it or not, what you see here is actually not a video. It was made from a simple collection of photos and transformed into a three-dimensional model. The best thing is that it didn't even need a thousand pictures, only a few, and could create the missing information afterward. As you can see, the results are amazing, but they aren't easy to generate and requires a bit more than only the images as inputs. Let's rewind a little. Imagine you want to generate a 3D model out of a bunch of pictures you took, like these ones. Instead of only using these pictures, you will also need to feed it a point cloud. A point cloud is basically the simplest form of a 3D model. You can see it as a draft version of your 3D model, represented by sparse points in 3D space, that looks just like this. These points also have the appropriate colors and luminance from the images you took. A point cloud is made using multiple photos triangulating the corresponding points to understand their position in 3D space. You now have your photos and a point cloud, or as we said, your 3D draft. You are ready to improve it. By the way, if you find this interesting, I invite you to subscribe, like the video, and share the knowledge by sending this video to a friend. I'm sure they will love it, and they will be grateful to learn something new because of you. And if you don't, no worries, thank you for watching. First, you will take your images and point cloud and send it to the first module, the rasterizer. Remember, the point cloud is basically our initial 3D reconstruction or our first draft. The rasterizer will produce the first low quality version of our 3D image using the camera parameters from your pictures and the point cloud. It will basically try to fill in the holes in your initial point cloud representation, approximating colors and understanding depth. This is a very challenging task, as it has to both understand the images that do not cover all the angles and the sparse point cloud 3D representation. It might not be able to fill in the whole 3D image intelligently due to this lack of information, which is why it looks like this. The still unknown pixels are replaced by the background, and this is all still very low resolution containing many artifacts. Since it's far from perfect, this step is made on multiple resolutions to help the next module with more information. The second module is the Neural Renderer. This Neural Renderer is just a unit like we covered numerous times on my channel to take an image as input and generate a new version of it as output. It will take the incomplete renderings of various resolutions as images, understand them, and produce a new version of each image in higher definition filling the holes. This will create high resolution images for all missing viewpoints of the scene. Of course, when I say to understand them, it means that the two modules are trained together to achieve this. This neural renderer will produce HDR novel images of the rendering, or high dynamic range images, which are basically more realistic high resolution images of the 3D scene with better lighting. The HDR results basically look like images of the scene in the real world. This is because the HDR images will have a much broader range of brightness than traditional JPEG encoded images where the brightness can only be encoded on 8-bit with a 255 to 1 range, so it won't look great if encoded in a similar format. A third and final module, the Tone Mapper, is introduced to take this broader range and learn an intelligent transformation to fit the 8-bit encoding better. This third module aims to take these HDR novel images and transform them into LDR images covering the whole scene, our final outputs. The LDR images or low dynamic range images will look much better with traditional image encodings. This module basically learns to mimic digital camera's physical lens and sensor properties to produce similar outputs from our previous real world like images. There are basically four steps in this algorithm. Create a point cloud from your images to have a first 3D rendering of the scene. Fill in the missing holes of this first rendering as best as possible using the images and camera information and do this with various image resolutions. Use these various image resolutions of the 3D rendering in a unit to create a high quality HDR image of this rendering for any viewpoint. Transform the HDR images into LDR images for better visualization. And voila! We have the amazing looking video of the scene we saw at the beginning of the video. As I mentioned, there are some limitations, one of which is the fact that they are highly dependent on the quality of the point cloud given for obvious reasons. 
Also, if the camera is very close to an object or the point cloud too sparse, it may cause holes like this one in the final rendering. Still, the results are pretty incredible considering the complexity of the task. We've made immense progress in the past year. You can take a look at the videos I made covering other neural rendering techniques less than a year ago and compare the quality of the results. It's pretty crazy. Of course, this is just an overview of this new paper attacking this super interesting task in a novel way. I invite you to read their excellent paper for more technical detail about their implementation and check their GitHub repository with pre-trained models. Both are linked in the description below. Thank you very much for watching the whole video. Please take a second to let me know what you think of the overall quality of the videos if you saw any improvements recently or not. And I will see you next week.